ladies, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of week where we gather together. This <laughs> sounds like a wedding. Where we gather together and we talk about stuff and we do a live stream. How's everybody doing? We, wow, that sounds really loud. I'm just trying to get my levels. I always screw this up because I do voice over here and the live stream and I always am going back and forth. But we got Pro Budget Films, Falcon Row, Q Curry, Beefy Tech, Marad Beefy again. What's up, everybody? Jonathan, Hiko, um, Axel, Devin, Richard, and a bunch of other folks in the house. Yeah, so today we're going to have some do something a little different. I was going to do some Fuji stuff. Maybe we'll do that next week. So we'll go into the other studio like we did last week. And we'll hook up the uh, Fuji, talk about that a little bit. I've shot with it a decent amount at this point, and um, I'm getting a good feel for that camera, really liking it. There's definitely some weird stuff going on. So, yeah, should be pretty interesting. Today, we're going to do something I don't think we've necessarily done before, but we're going to unbox something because I found this really interesting travel video tripod that I wanted to check out. And we're also going to look at some lenses. I just purchased a bunch of vintage lenses. So much lens content uh, is coming our way here on the channel. So that's going to be super dank. Um, really stoked about that stuff. Am I sounding okay? Are we good? Can we keep going? Just thought I'd check in with you because sometimes I forget to look at the chat. Right. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to grab this box real quick. So I found this on Amazon while I was tooling around over there. Grab Leatherman. Side note, this, I think, is the best Leatherman that Leatherman makes. It is the Wingman. Wingman. Um, it's a lot less expensive than a lot of the other ones out there. Um, let me just also make sure I'm seeing all the chat instead of just the top chat. There we go. Awesome. Um, I love this thing. I've had other Leatherman and that mechanism that works with the handle. This one's a little different. Um, like so. This mechanism lasts so much longer than the more expensive Leathermans out there. So this one I think is around 20 bucks and it has just about everything I need. It's got the pliers, knife, scissors, um, and a bunch of other little doodads on here. So, I, you know, if you're shopping for something, get the Wingman. I think it's great. It's also smaller, less uh, massive, so it's a lot easier to manage. Anyway, that's not why you guys came here <laughs> at all. So let's do this. It's from China, so it's got that Chinese tape. I don't know what is... I've gotten a lot of stuff, you know, from um, Dryers Done. I got a, I've gotten a lot of stuff from China, obviously, as you guys know, on this channel. And they always use this yellow tape. And it's... Uh, I don't know why. It's interesting. But I don't really see that much here in the States. Maybe it's a European thing. I don't know. You guys can let me know, because I'm pretty sure we have a decent international uh, audience this evening so this is oh by the way check the description i've got links to stuff we're going to talk about i think this tripod is at the top of the list so i'm pretty excited it's essentially which we'll talk about here in a second wow if i can get the bag out drop that box this is essentially a knockoff or very similar tripod to the be free made by uh Manfrotto. Yeah. So that tripod is great for travel. Super duper small. Got a piece of that yellow tape stuck to my finger. And this one looks similar. So let's jump in and see what we got. Cute little bag, as you can see. Pretty small. Right? Bunch of documentation. Don't need that at all. I think we can figure it out. All right, looking good. A little bigger than I was expecting, but still pretty small. And there it is. Pretty small, I would say under 20 inches, about 20 inches. And uh, let's go ahead and open her up. It's got those clicking legs. Oh yeah, nice. Pull the other ones down. Oh, this will be interesting. <laughs> I should have done this in the other room. And there you go. You can adjust the legs. It's got the uh, 
rotating. It's not carbon fiber, so it's aluminum. Um, cost on this puppy, 120 bucks. So what I'm really interested in is to see what this uh, tripod head is like. Looks like a standard Manfrotto, like 5023 style or whatever numbers they're using these days. I don't really use those plates anymore. I'm all uh, Arca Swiss, as you guys can check out my videos. And we got a donation from Devin Trent. How reliable are speed boosters for autofocus? Any recommendations? I'm trying, I'm thinking about getting one for the GH5S. Um, I haven't really done too much. Um, I, the way I see it, you can't lose because Panasonic's autofocus isn't that great to begin with. So I would imagine the speed boosters would be able to keep up um, decently. I'm sure there's other videos out there that would that would talk about that. Um, but yeah, so let's check this thing out. Thank you for the donation. That's very kind of you. I'm sorry I can't answer your question more. I, I really haven't used um, autofocus much uh, on the cameras, period, much less, um, you know, with a speed booster. Things are feeling really nice on this guy. This, this handle is probably the smallest tripod handle I've ever seen but um, it's got some nice counterbalancing so it's it's trying to correct so that's really sweet um, the head is really small I'm trying to find something comparable to look at here um, let's see well here's the Leatherman so that'll work right I don't know if you guys can see that really small here's an SSD smaller than that well about the same size i guess so i think this will be great for on the go you can see that i'll tilt it over so you can see the plate um, it's just wider than that plate so i think this is going to work really nice for keeping things nice and lightweight um, has a lock on the side i'm going to see if i can adjust the fluidity a little bit yeah so you can really stiffen it up um, but it feels really smooth. The question is, yes, okay, so this is great. Um, with cheaper tripods and even more expensive tripods, um, I have found that if you don't have multiple levels of control with your, with your drag, um, they're always too zippy. And that's my biggest beef with a lot of the Benro and Manfrotto tripods is you have to really, you have to jump to a pretty expensive tripod to get good enough features to make that work. If you're spending like 400 bucks, even $500, $600, often you're not going to get that, and it's just too zippy. My Benro, a couple of them that I've used, are almost unusable when it comes to the pan because they're all over the place. So if I'm going to have a tripod and buy a more affordable one, um, I'd prefer to have a really uh, you know, stiff tripod. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to use that word too much. But yeah, this one's really nice, so nice slow silkiness and i like that it snaps back so for small bodies like a sony a6500 or even up to like a 5d or gh5 um, i think this is going to work well so anyway that is uh I'm trying to remember the name m something does it say right here the millie boo tripod travel tripod is there a model number no but it's in the description i've linked to it on amazon 120 bucks and you're in the game. We got Craig Adams. How you doing, bro? Um, how do I make a Zoom transition? <laughs> Peter McKinnon? What LUT do you use? Nice. Okay, I see what we're doing here. How's that minimal apartment going? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you replied to my comment on that video. Of course, I didn't mean anything negative at all. As you can see, Things aren't real minimal around here. Um, but yeah. Will it convert to a monopod? I don't think so. Nope. You're stuck in tripod mode. How long did it take to ship from China? Not long. Um, I want to say a couple days. Looks like my video cut out there for a second. Uh, right. I'm trolling you, man. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> for a second there, I was... Yep, yep, yep. Um, quite right. Someone's talking to my wife. I'm missing something here in the comments. Yes, I am not minimal, Craig. If you go, to, if you ever visit, 
Um, our house is really pretty minimal. Considering we now have two kids, it's really, really clean up there. It's just down here in the studio where things are way out of control. Way, way out of control. Um, right. So, yeah, sorry about the video. Is it still gone for you guys? Uh, my HDMI is start. My HDMI is dying on multiple cameras. The actual jack looks like we're still good. Um, yeah, the the uh, G7 is dying. My GH4 dying. GD5 is hanging in there. So yeah, HDMI falls apart. Anyway, that's the tripod. Let's chat about lenses, shall we? So I have a list. Let's go over to Chrome here. And we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you some of the stuff I recently have ordered and cannot wait to check out. This is, this is, I'm just going to start with the, the big guns here. So I ordered one of these. It is a Zenitar 1C or Zenitar 1 80 millim, 85 millimeter f1.4. And what's cool about this lens is obviously it's going to be fast. Um, you, there's several different mounts. It's going to come in an M42 or a Canon EF mount. Um, we'll talk about it after this here in a second. But what's awesome is the uh, bokeh on this puppy. So let's just go to Google Images here and try to find some images. Surely, oh really? This is pretty sad. Yeah, so you get this what's called swirly or bubbly um, bokeh on this lens. So it's going to be slightly soft at that uh, 1.4, but I'm really stoked. I've seen some amazing stuff. If you just, you know, hop on YouTube and search for um, this lens, you're going to find a lot of videos of people showing it off. So, and it's pretty affordable, <clears throat> excuse me, when you consider what you're getting here. So um, Zenitar or Zenit is kind of in that same Russian family as the Helios, which I have right here. Um, really, really cool vintage. These ones are actually, you can buy them new still, but, um, awesome, awesome glass. So I'm really stoked about this lens for portrait, uh, for kind of that telephoto look. And I think that on something like that new, uh, Sony a seven three is going to be pretty ridiculous. So let's move on. That's the first one. Uh, go back to my list here. The next couple are really interesting because they're pretty affordable. And the first is this Indostar 26 dash 26. It's a 50 millimeter f 2.8. So it's a little slower. Um, but as you can see, it's a really, really cool uh, looking lens. And then the image you get out of it is pretty fantastic as well, especially if you're going to be on a full frame sensor. A um, couple things about this lens. It is an AM 39 mount. So quickly, I want to talk about adapters because this is going to make a big, uh, you know, it's, depending on what you're shooting with, it's going to be something you need to pay attention to. So uh, the two mounts that we're going to see a lot of in the lenses we're going to take a look at are M42 and M39. M42 uh, will work with Canon EF and all the mirrorless stuff. So here's one right here. Let me go ahead and just get crazy here. And because I'm on a Panasonic camera, touch screen focus. Oh, fail. Back it off a little bit. Nope. Yep. Okay. This is um, another M42 lens and it's just a screw mount. So this adapter is all you need to go to Canon EF. Cute little lens, threads, super easy, right? So this will work with Canon all the way down to the mirrorless stuff. Now, M39 will not work with a Canon DSLR. So here is a super sexy um, Jupiter 11, Jupiter 9. And uh, this is a similar thing. It's a threaded adapter. I won't take it all the way off. But this won't work with Canon EF. It will work with all the mirrorless stuff. So Fuji, Sony, Panasonic, um, probably, I would imagine, the uh, Canon uh, M50 or the Canon EF M and just jump in the chat here. Make sure I miss anything. Good. We're good. Okay, cool. So M42 work with full frame Canon and M39 
39 is going to be for mirrorless. So this lens, I don't know if you guys saw that because I just realized I had my stupid window up here. But this lens is super duper cheap. Um, let me pull it back up. Let's go to eBay, search for the same thing. Um, yeah, so here you can buy for 30 bucks, you can buy four of them. They sell these things in batches, I've noticed. So you can buy like hundreds of them at a time. Like here we go. How many of these? 50 of them, if you wanted to. They're super cute. They come in all kinds of different colors, black, silver. So I'm really excited about those. Um, I think you can get them for like 10 to 20 bucks. So pretty awesome. That's shipped from like the Ukraine or something. So that's the 26, uh, Indistar 26, and it's a 50 millimeter F 2.8. Sometimes it comes in a 52, 53, 54, and 55. Um, the 61 is uh, very similar. It's tricky because they have the, the brand, a number, and that number means it's a certain focal length. So it's, it's kind of confusing. So this is very similar, um, just another variant. And uh, so those two numbers are, are very similar, 26 and 61. Um, yeah. So those are going to come in M39, not going to work on Canon DSLRs, so the EF mount. Uh, the next is the Indistar 26. Oh, maybe you already did that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 26, we already did that one. 69, here we go. Indistar 69. Uh, this is a fifth. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong search here. There it is, Indistar 69. This is a 28 millimeter f2.8. And I already have this lens, which I love. It's super, super tiny, as you can see. This thing on like a Canon full frame looks hilarious. I even used it on my C100 back when I had it. Um, this is a 50 millimeter f3.5, really interesting look, old Russian lens. This is kind of a similar lens that we're looking at right now except it's 28 millimeter. So all these on full frame just look awesome and uh, really, really fun stuff. Did I just see Maddie? Maddie, 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 what's going on, bruh? I don't know why I just said that. Please forgive me. Played too much Xbox recently. Um, oh, yeah, so I missed your live stream, but I'll have to check it out. Yeah, live streaming, if, if, you, if my first few are up still, it's a nightmare <laughs> trying to figure out where it's all going and uh, get everything sorted. So thanks for joining us, bro. Hope you're doing well. Are you going to um, NAB? If you're still in the chat, let me know. We should uh, hang out on the floor, show floor sometime. Be fun. Um, right. So 28 millimeter F2.8 moving along. So those are going to be fun little cat, like almost like lens cap lens. You just leave them um, on your camera. If you're not using something else, super fun. This next one's really interesting, and that is the Zenit Tar 11A. So this is a 135 millimeter lens, M42 mount, so it will work with pretty much everything. Um, f2.8, and it you know sounds kind of boring, right? But this thing has 20 aperture blades, which means there's going to be super hot um uh bokeh so you can sh shoot wide open and as you close your aperture it's going to stay perfectly round so on a lot of these other lenses let's see this one it's kind of a pain in the butt to change the, the aperture so yeah on a lot of these lenses either have like a hexagon or a pentagon uh as you close that aperture down because there's fewer blades the more blades you have, the more round they stay, no matter what aperture setting you're at. So this lens uh, ought to be pretty fantastic, and the price isn't bad. One sixty-five for this one, twenty-five dollars shipping. So another Russian lens. You're seeing a theme here. Uh, and what I love about all this stuff is it's not really that well known, so you can still get a ton of great um, deals on eBay and whatnot. Um, you know, Nikon. All those vintage or older lenses we've all seen that before we all know about it so this stuff is really really fun it has kind of a different character to it all and the next one is a helios 44 2 
but this one has 16 blades. So I have the traditional one here. This has eight blades. There's a six blade version. So again, those as you stop it down, you're gonna get kind of different shapes in the blurred out background with highlights and, and the bokeh and everything. Uh, this model, if you search for 16 blade, you'll also get um, a little more expensive, but you're gonna have that really nice aperture. And I found these guys recently, this uh, iron glass brand. So these guys in Russia or Ukraine are rehousing these. So you can kind of pick and choose all kinds of different features. So this one, super pretty. They've polished it up, 16 blades, uh, 75, 90 bucks with shipping. Um, they also have a zebra style, which is, you know, that really nice um, uh, zebra pattern, if you will. Here's another one that looks really hot. That's nice, right? Pretty sweet. Uh, and they also do, I'm sure there's one right here. Here we go. Really nice uh, infinity rings on them. So if you're into the whole follow focus thing, um, you can get something sexy like this. Really nice and shiny. So yeah, check those guys out. Excuse me. Oh man, this time of day I get all kinds of burpee, which is uh, rough. Awesome, Maddie. So you're going sweet. Yeah, let's. I'll be on the show floor, Central Hall, which I'd imagine uh, most of us will be hanging out at. So sweet. Uh, yeah, let's definitely connect. That'd be sweet. Let's see if we can see say sweet a few more times. Right. So that's the Helios um, 44.2. The last one is a lesser known cousin. And if you guys haven't heard of these lenses, uh, definitely check them out. Just jump on eBay, search for Helios 44. There will be hundreds of options. You can get them pretty cheap depending on how many blades there are. And these have a really beautiful uh, swirly bokeh as well. So the background kind of warps beautifully. It's really, really pretty. So check out those lenses, and there's a gazillion modified ones out there, different versions, um, but you really can't go wrong with any of them. So this one is the MC Helios 77M, and this is a 50 millimeter f1.8. So traditionally, these Helios 44s are 58 f2. So this model is uh, 75 bucks, 90-ish bucks with shipping, depending on where you buy it. Uh, 50 f 1.8. So it's gonna have similar characteristics, not quite the same because these are fairly unique, and uh, but you get a little bit of a faster aperture. Again, Russian lens, good stuff. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is Jupiter lenses. So I haven't done a video on these yet, but here's one of them. Again, Russian lenses, they come in silver or black, different models of them. Um, and we'll just search for Jupiter. Again, description has everything. If you guys can't remember this stuff, um, which I totally wouldn't blame you. But Jupiter lenses, uh, you have to do a little research, but uh, I'll do a video on it here in the future. They have the name Jupiter and then a number after them. And these are stunning lenses, really, really gorgeous, very low contrast. Um, I mean, I can't say enough good things about them. So definitely check those out. I would recommend the Jupiter 11, the Jupiter, not eight, Jupiter nine, which is a 85, I believe. Yep. Jupiter three, which is a 50 millimeter F 1.5. And a lot of these are going to be, again, the M39 mount. So they won't work with Canon DSLRs, but they will work with all mirrorless cameras. Um, and then there's a couple other ones I'm probably not remembering. I think Jupiter 8 is another 52 F2. Yep. So those are all fantastic. Really can't go wrong with them. Uh, we got our donation from Patrick Monaghan. I'm sorry. I suck at reading things out loud. Hey, dude. I want a set of ND or IRND filters to use with my vintage lenses, 4x5.65. Do you still use and like the Tiffin set? I don't have those anymore. Um, I loved them, though. Um, I'm just about to kind of get back into some more ND stuff, but Tiffin is pretty safe. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of another brand that I really like. Uh, High Tech Format is another brand you should check out. 
they have several different levels of of nd but tiffin is a good safe middle of the road pricing wise so you can't go wrong with that so thank you for the donation and uh happy shopping right on oh firecrest i've heard of those guys too thanks for the hit there kyle um you still want me to do a video on tripods well i have one actually right behind me that um was sent to me i'm not going to do a review on it um but let me grab it real quick because it's really slick okay hopefully i won't knock a box over this time i'm gonna have to move a rig real quick How insane is this beast? We'll be talking about this in an upcoming video, but yeah, it's like turning a GH5S into a red-ish sort of setup. And then these wireless follow focus dealios should be pretty fun. Okay. So this is, um, a, a monopod system from iFootage. They have two models. One uh, I don't have with me. And what's really slick is it just has these two parts of the handle that you twist and fully extend a monopod. So if you're like me and you've used a monopod for ye so many situations, um, instead of undoing all the different legs, you just whoosh, pull it out, lock it back in place, and you're good to go. This one is similar, a little different though. And it uses this really clever locking system. So I'll just demonstrate. Here's the head. Really nice. Perfectly acceptable. And there's this uh, keyed, whatever you would call this, male and female receptors. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. At any rate, here's the actual um, monopod leg. And part of it is carbon fiber. And you'll notice that it comes in two sections, the carbon fiber section right here. And then there's the, what looks like the traditional monopod section, but you've got these little locking things. So you can just do your nice compact little monopod setup or extend it a little bit, lock it in place like that. And then here are the feet. And what I love about these, very similar to the Manfrotto style. Ugh, let me scoot forward a little bit. Um, the really nice legs, but they lock so much better. So you know how the old Manfrotto set up? I'm sorry, I got to burp. One second. Dude, lunch is killing me today, and I eat salads. So at any rate, here's the feet. Um, you can actually use this in an interview scenario um, without it being a gimmick. It actually will lock in place, uh, and you don't have to worry about it tipping over. Whereas the Manfrotto ones, you kind of had to find the center and then hope and pray it didn't fall over. So this thing, same thing. I'm just going to one-handed find this key. Oh, of course, this isn't going to work on camera. Ugh. All right, we're going to have to do this two-handed. So you pull down the little collar, drop it in, let go, and now it's locked in place. What's cool about this system is let's say... I want, what is it called, a low boy, or where you set up a tiny tripod kind of on the ground. You can just take the feet off, set this down, uh, grab the tripod head, and lock in place. And now you have this adorable little tripod setup. So it's pretty sweet. You can get multiple ones of them, connect them together, and do like a 20-foot pole, which is really awesome. Um, yeah, so I really like them. Really, really sturdy, well-made, and I love that I can do stuff like this. So that's iFootage. I'm sure if you Google or search for iFootage monopod, you'll find all kinds of good stuff. So one sec. Okay. So is the, I hear people saying, or see people saying the sound is off. We'll see if it fixes itself. Um, how does it compare to the, compare to the chicken foot? I don't know what that is. Hi hat. Thank you, Kyle. That's what I meant. I love having helpful people in here. Um, what's up, Carlos? I think I've seen your videos before. Yep. Just check your channel. Keep up the good work. 
Uh, right. So anyway, <laughs> that's the uh, unboxing, the lenses. And what's really interesting about this whole why you know, all these Russian lenses is if you and it's if you're a history buff, this is kind of fun. Um, when the Russians took over Germany, they stumbled across a Carl Zeiss or Carl Zeiss. And they actually took a lot of those plans and started making their own lenses. So a ton of these lenses that we just talked about and several others I didn't talk about um, are copies of Zeiss glass using the schematics and slight alterations. So they're pretty decent. They're definitely kind of their own thing, but um, they're really, really well made and really awesome stuff. Oh, close the browser. Good call. Oh, that's embarrassing. Did you guys see any of that? I just realized that wasn't uh, open at all. Here, I'll show you again. This is why you need like a producer for these live streams. Uh, so for those who didn't see it, which is probably most of you because it was blocked by that stupid uh, browser, um, this is just the setup again. We got the pole in the center, two legs essentially, so it packs down really nice like so. And then you can add it back on like that. On the one end, you got the nice uh, locking knobs. And then um, on the top and bottom, you can add really anything, but here's the tripod head that can go on the top, feet really nice feet that can go on the bottom and then you can create a the little guy so I'm sorry I just realized I had the browser covering everything the whole time Wait, is that that down? and maybe we can get into some questions um, I'm really stoked for this wireless system I'll go ahead and just give you guys a quick lowdown on that so this is from a company called PD movie uh, they seem to have also models that they're selling through ICANN, excuse me, but it is a really affordable system if you've been shopping for a wireless follow focus. Um, those are really expensive. So for, I believe, around $1,000 or $1,500, you get the remote, which is awesome. Uh, really, really nice charges over USB, super smooth. And what's cool about this is it's not just a knob here but there's actually little rockers. So you can control up to three motors. The kit I have comes with two motors. You can buy up to three. And then you can program one for your iris, one for focus, and one for zoom. If you have a, like a cinema zoom and control all three from this device. And then you can tell this knob here or the little rocker switches what to do. So let's say you don't really care about focus, but you're gonna do this really dramatic um, driving a truck out of a warehouse into a desert <laughs> where you need to make that exposure change, you could program this knob to be your iris. So you have very fine control and um, it'll work with and without hard stops on your lens. It has auto calibration and it um, has an iPhone app. So you can tap into it, create all kinds of profiles, AB points, tons of stuff. You can change the speeds of everything. You can change with a tap the direction of the rotation. Lots of really cool stuff. So if you're in the market for a um, wireless follow focus, check out those guys. I will have a review soon with more details. Um, but the nice thing about this also is there's no fizz. So it's literally this thing, um, one or two motors or three if you choose that, and that's it. There's no extra external you know fizz that you have to manage at all so i think that's pretty cool donation from carlos twenty dollars big spender over here he says how do you like the fujifilm camera I saw the pic on twitter the colors are gorgeous um sure i'll jump into that the fuji xh1 is my first fuji so i've never shot on a fuji before and there's always been something to keep me away from fuji but this was the first camera is like, this is looking really solid. And I've always had big respect for their color science. So after using it, it's weird. It, it, the color is just incredible. 
you can shoot i haven't really shot much with the f log because there's no way to deal with LUTs in camera at least that i know of um but the eterna that film simulation that's on that camera is really really solid i like that a lot and it just looks it's just great you pull it in to your editor um, you make a couple tweaks and you're done you really don't have to push it much which is good because i'm noticing if you push it you know it's better than like a canon dslr but you will start to see things fall apart if you really try to stretch uh exposure and color um a couple other things love the ergonomics are outrageously good um up until now i've always thought canon to be the best when you pick up a 1dx or a 5d it's just perfect uh, this camera i think is even better it just feels amazing in the hand i love the grip that you have a, a plug-in power jack that's insane like how many other cameras give that to us and um, it also comes with a power cable so if out of the box you're able just to plug it into the wall which is awesome um, menu systems are a little funky uh, I'm really unhappy with the screen, at least coming from Panasonic stuff. Like on a GH5, I never use peaking. You just, even with a 1.2 lens, you can bam, you see your focus perfectly. On this camera, I was constantly guessing my focus. Um, so, you know, as I'm filming, I was like, I'm going to go out and back in just to make sure we're good. Even though I had it correct the whole time, it's just not quite, I don't know, the resolution or something with it isn't quite there um there's no way to check exposure just if you have the camera at least to my knowledge i mean you have histograms i guess or a histogram but there's just there's nothing there so you're completely winging it luckily uh the exposure and color on the camera seem to be on the screen seem to be pretty good so i shot a little piece that you know we'll see in some upcoming reviews or something on the camera uh and it it, it it worked well. I was a little over for the whole thing, but I was able to correct that easily. Um, 4K looks great. 200 megabits per second is awesome. So a little better than what uh, Sony's given us. But coming from Panasonic, uh, I immediately was missing just the horsepower of uh, 10-bit 422 um, and being able, I mean, the GH5S and the GH5, I've been shooting on the GH5 for long enough where I really know uh, V-Log L, and I can just move exposure all over the place and not really worry about it. So that's kind of my initial thoughts. I really like the camera. I like it enough to where the, the faults aren't really a thing for me, and stills are just outrageous on that thing. So love it. Love it. It's good stuff. Uh, great question. Thank you very much for that donation, Carlos. Hope you're doing well over there. Check out his channel. He's got some uh, great content as well. Q Curry, $2 donation. What's the best glass? Canon, Tamron, Sigma, Rokinon. That's a tough one. Um, if you're asking me between all of those, these days I would lean towards Sigma. I think they're doing some really cool stuff. The quality of Canon glass is really, really nice, though. Um, Rokinon. I like, I'm slowly working toward a kit of those DS, the cinema lenses, not the, the zines, but the smaller ones. Uh, but the green is silly. You can correct it, yeah, but just out of the box, it's not really good color. Um, I really like Nikon. Like if I were starting over, just a good set of Nikon primes. Um, Nikkor AIS lenses would be really nice. Fuji versus Lumix, any preference? Overall, I like what Panasonic's doing with the GH5S, um, but Fujifilm is just gorgeous. So we'll be talking more about the camera. I think the next video-centric Fuji camera is going to be a pretty nice setup. I think hopefully they'll get some good feedback from this camera and then come out with something super dope. All right. Lucas Thorup donation thank you very much lucas he asks panasonic 12 to 35 2 8 or 12 to 60 2.8 to 4 um just comes down to cost if you can get the 12 to 35 um but i really like that panasonic 12 to 60 uh, if you don't really care about the aperture thing just get that 12 to 60 it has dual is2 built in and uh, that range on a panasonic camera is really nice so i do really dig that lens <laughs> 
and I've talked about in the past, but if you buy a GH5 or no, a G85 as a kit with the lens, you can turn around and sell the lens for a decent amount of money. And then essentially you're buying the G85 for, you know, what, whatever math I came up with the other day. And I tweeted that like 500 bucks. So $600, not bad. Um, is a GH5 worth it anymore? I think so. Cause it's still nine or a thousand, right? With the lens, um, and flip out screen image stabilization. I still use it all the time. It's kind of my walkie around e vloggy e camera and I like it. Okay, Stata LaForge, since YouTube is so packed with camera dudes, who are your favorite non-male camera gear YouTube channels? I, there could be other ones. I'm only thinking of one right now, uh, Atola Visuals. Um, she's uh, somewhat recent to the scene, at least from what I've seen, uh, but she's been doing some gear reviews and killing it. So check out her channel. Um, there's got to be other ones I'm not thinking of, but that's the one I've seen recently in my subscription box. Um, that's pretty solid. So yeah. Great question though. There's no, I told there's, okay, get this. So there's been one single female ever who has stopped me on the street or even at NAB, um, to say, Hey, I watch your channel one female. And I'm not saying that like that should be more often, but um, at NAB, there's so many of us that know each other. Um, that's just seems stupid to me. And uh, I told her, like, just start a YouTube channel. You're immediately, you know, there's your like zero competition. It's just a bunch of dudes. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Kyle, mark him $10 donation. He says or asks, so I'm building a light kit for pro work and I want to know how many I need. Uh, I was thinking 300D, one two 120Ds, and two uh, Luminaire Mini switches um, with double the amount of C stands. I think that's a good start. Um, I mean, that could be great, and you're done right there. Um, I find myself these days that I like one B's to light and then a couple little lights. So in general, I find myself using something like a 300D or the Kane TV 150 watt or that 120D and then a couple, maybe three or four little lights, um, especially with these sensors becoming more and more sensitive. And it depends on what you're working with or what you type of stuff you shoot. But I think you're, you're on to a great start. Um, and I say start, but that would be more than enough of a lighting kit for myself. But again, I was traditionally a corporate video interview guy. So we shot interviews, 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 and some B-roll. So I didn't really need a ton of lights. So you're right on track, man. Good stuff. Thank you for the donation. Nice. Um, building a collection of Nikkor AIS lenses from Bananas and Bass. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Really nice. Epos Vox, what's going on, bro? Just got a big old kit of Nikon or Rokinon Cine DS and thought I'd notice greening uh, to it. Glad I'm not crazy. Yeah, they're they're definitely green, very, very significantly green. But again, that's a, a little tweak in post, and you're good. And if you're using a whole set, then it's a lot easier to work with. Um, so I guess you are debating on to get the GH5S or A7 III. I have the A7 III on pre-order. The GH5S is not leaving this studio. That camera is um, solid. It's my favorite right now. Um, with that speed booster thing we talked about, it's pretty great. And again, just push it in post and it'll take whatever. Um, so for a $2,500 camera, that's pretty sweet. Uh, right on. Trying to catch up with you guys. Um, where do I even jump in here? Where did I leave off? More like, love that hoodie. Yeah, so um, I'm working on a bunch of merch. This is one of them. Focus. There we go. 
Um, there will be this. I'm going to do a line of, of this style. So there will be different cinema lenses. I just finished the um, uh, Zeiss Cine Zooms. So there will be a shirt with the three Zeiss uh, Zooms. Um, we got some of my shirts with my logo without any text. So it's just a nice camera and map box setup and a couple other shirts. So those will be available for too long. Um, I've got a couple test ones in. So I'm wearing this again because it's been crazy cold here recently. Okay. This is Tech Today. How's it going, man? Um, best 4K camera with great focus for video. Under $1,000. Probably a Sony A6300. Be my guess. Boobs or peen? Uh, depending on what you're discussing there. I'm a happily married heterosexual man. Um... Let's see. What do I think of the new Aperture MX from Matt SB Visuals? I cannot wait to play with that little light. I've been using the um, M9s forever and love them. Uh, and now that we're using these low light cameras, um, it's going to be pretty sick. I have a backpack. Um, well, uh, do you get, let me know if you want to see the backpack. I'm working on a video, like an entire video kit in a backpack. I'm talking light stands, audio, everything. Um, I can definitely do it with a small carry-on Pelican case, and I'm pushing myself to see if I can make a backpack work, and that light will probably find its way in there. Excuse me, but I'm really stoked to play with it. Uh, the GH5 and GH5S, great for YouTube videos, right on. Also, I need to figure out how to turn chat on on the stream, unless it's already working, which would be great. But can you guys see it on the video, in the video? Or is that not possible? I know it's like a thing now to have the, the uh, chat on one side of the screen. Um... Left Coast, what's going on? Levi's in the house. Yeah, collab at NAB. I cannot wait. Um, so I don't know what exactly we're going to do, but we'll come up with something. I think I owe you a tweet or a direct message. So we'll, we'll do that. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. We should uh, definitely do something. Uh, what days are you going to be in, by the way? I'm not quite sure when I'm landing now, but we'll figure something out. It ought to be fun. Check out his videos, uh, Left Coast, i.e. Uh, Levi. He's got some great video content. Also, some super dang van action. I really want a van. Not just a van, but a uh, Sprinter. So you can like walk in there. I'd love to have like a rolling studio where I could shoot in there, but also travel maybe team up with some companies, hook some people up with essentially what um, Rode did. What did they call that? Um, like a studio something where like Rode had uh, a sound designer walk in and like help them treat a room and hook them up with a bunch of gear. That would be sick. I'd love to do that. But uh, it's probably going to have to wait. Right. I'm all over the place in the chat as usual. You guys know what to expect. And white images. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing this in black and white, inverted, all kinds of different stuff. Where am I located? I am in the Chicagoland area. Are you doing coverage of NAB um, or just checking everything out? I might do what I do each year or have been doing, which is just a single video of just like, here's some cool stuff I saw, and that's it. I don't really do the whole you know, 500 videos in 24 hours or whatever. Um, and maybe I won't. Who knows? It just, it just depends. Usually I use NAB to catch up with people like Levi, other content creators, hang out with you guys. So if you're in the area or out, you know, in the Nevada, you know, West Coast, LA area, 
it's a great show to go to just to check out the gear, but also just to hang out. Um, so like Maddie was in here earlier. Hopefully we'll be able to chill a little bit. Um, there's usually some events and parties and stuff talking with vendors. And I just love hanging out on the show floor and just chatting with everybody. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll probably mainly be doing is just walking around, shooting the breeze with people. Um, I bet you can't say my name, Emil. There you go. Awesome. Welcome, Dylan. He hasn't been able to check out the live stream till now. Uh, where was the new set in the video about vinyl versus paper? Okay, so um, I did that video before the new set, but all those vinyls are set up so I can pull them down. Like if this is the other studio back there, they can all pull down in front of the background, if that makes sense. So it's still set up and I'm still able to use it. Uh, Loxia lineup for Sony, I haven't. But uh, yeah. Nice, left coast. Man, I was so pissed off that... Everyone else seemed to get the MX but me. Not everyone, but a couple other people. And I was like, balls. I really want to play with that. But yeah, looks pretty sick. So, nice. Um, I did get the Aperture F7, which I recently learned I can talk about, or at least mention, but I can't like show you in-depth specs on. So, a new light from Aperture. There's going to be a video on that on the channel, pretty much entitled my favorite new LED light because that thing is killer. Um, so yeah. Lost my spot. There it is. What do you think Think of the A7S 3 Will you switch to Sony? I have an A7 III coming. I'll probably be pre-ordering the A7S 3 to cover that camera since that'll be fairly significant. Um, and with all these cameras, like I usually kind of buy and sell and hang on to the, the ones I'm most fond of. So I don't want to put out the idea that I have <laughs> enough capital to just buy every single camera and keep them all. That is impossible. Um, but I do leave headroom for times like this where like every bloody manufacturer is coming out with something ridiculous. So yeah. Um, I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. Um... Would love to see the backpack. All right, let's do it real quick. Let me grab it. It's right here. Ugh. <sighs> Let me find a place for these light stands. So the whole concept is, I'm just going to leave my headphones off, entire video package in a single backpack. So this is a really cheap uh, backpack. Let me make sure I'm not stupidly blocking the screen. Okay, good. So, Tubu, Tubu, T T U B U. It's like 60, 70 bucks on Amazon, maybe even less. Um, decent backpack, you know, it's not a Temba or a Think Tank or anything, but I have a ton packed in here. And for light stands, I'm using these guys. They're essentially sort of like knockoff Manfrotto's, but they're from Impact. I uh, really like them. They're under 19 inches, I think. And uh, those attach to the front. Easier to do this on the ground. But there's a little sack for the... Um, the idea is you have a tripod mounted where I have this light stand. But I can mount two of these uh, light stands on the front. Let me set that back down. Hopefully I'm not pinching my HDMI cable. And then we'll jump into the actual backpack. Let me turn around like, like this so that you guys can hear me. So I'm not going to hold it up because I've got a ton of stuff packed in here. But essentially, it you know, it's a traditional, well, I'll kind of hold it up. Traditional, you got all the little compartments and everything. In the center where you would normally have like your camera and a 70 to 200, I have a bunch of grip gear that I'll talk about in the video specifically. 
and then one of these tiny carbon fiber tripods, which I love. A um, bunch of other little grip gear. And I have a whole system for mounting the lights, diffusion, microphone, all that good stuff. Uh, camera fits in here too. Uh, I'm using the A6500 with the Sony 28 to 105. Little microphone, dead cat. And then two Aperture M9s. Did I miss a donation, by the way? If I missed a donation, oh, I think I did. All right, uh, Kamal will come back to you, I promise. So stay tuned. Um, right, so two of these lights, which are powered and can be charged off of USB, and I have three USB batteries. Uh, these have two um, outputs, both at uh, two amps, so this will be able to power everything in this bag. The Sony A6500, charging those batteries, um, the lights, so I showed you two of the lights. The third is, one sec, This light, which isn't out yet, but stay tuned. Be on YouTube uh, on March 30th. It looks pretty typical, right? Boring whatever light, but this is really special. So, that's essentially the key light. Um, close all this up. And there's some other stuff like some uh, uh, filters and batteries, SD cards, and then, oh my gosh, it's real tight on this side. In the laptop sleeve, if I can pull it out here, I have two of these little tiny uh, five in one reflectors. One is a 24 inch and the other is a 36. So yeah, these pop out and I'll use that for diffusion and a bounce. So that's it. Two light stands, maybe three, um, a tripod, camera, lenses, or lens, batteries, power for everything, three lights, a microphone, um, and I would use a wireless system probably with this backpack setup. With my Pelican case setup, I can have another light stand and do uh, a nice boom setup. So that video ought to be pretty fun, um, being able to fit everything in a backpack and like legit everything, not just a camera and lenses, but uh, an entire interview lighting setup. So we'll get to that at some point. I'm gonna set this down. Put my phones back on. And get to these donations, plural. Uh, Kamal, in my opinion, with your content, you should be near 1 million subscribers. What do you think is preventing you from growing like other big film channels? Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, five pounds, which is better than five dollars. So thank you very much. And uh, for the kind words. It's hard to tell. YouTube is, as I almost spilled coffee everywhere. YouTube is weird. You know, you can't predict any of that. I think, honestly, I'm roughly where I should be. Um, I feel a million followers is about the best I'll ever do. I mean, I, I kind of thinking about, um, film riot, right? So they're at a million and I feel like that's about, um, all I'm going to get to. My content isn't really super mainstream. Um, I think it might keep growing fairly well just because more people are getting into video than ever. Um, but great guys like Maddie, Peter McKinnon, film riot to an extent, um, cover more broad topics and maybe we'll do that more in the future um, so there's that kind of barrier there but I'm happy with where things are obviously I would love a million subscribers but uh, yeah so you never know and then you know <laughs> it's sad to think about but I started YouTube the same around the same time that PewDiePie did obviously very very different outcomes and of course he does content that's way more open to people. All right, Matt SB Visuals, I bought the cane, he donated five pounds, thank you very much. Oh no, we just, we just covered that. Did I miss another one? Oh. Yes, I did, Jake Curie, did we cover this? Um, okay, no I didn't, $10. 
Thank you very much. You're a beast. He asks, so do Metabones adapters, are they worth it for Panasonic line? Do I lose autofocus features or stability with the adapter on? Um, you autofocus, it depends on the lens and the adapter. I think it'll still work. May not work quite as good as Panasonic lenses, but, you know, shouldn't be too bad. Um, stabilization, you with Panasonic cameras like the GH5, you still have stabilization. Um, it might not be quite as good as a Panasonic lens that talks with the camera, but it still ought to be really, really good. So I wouldn't worry about stabilization on your GH5. Um, you, you just have almost nothing to lose with the Metabones um, on Panasonic. Sony, a little different, but uh, yeah, that's what's up to that. Thank you for the do donations. Let me grab some coffee here and read, see what's going on. Matt SB, man, did I miss, you must have double donated or I missed something here. Uh, I bought the Came Fate A6500 for my EOS and modified it to fit after watching your video. Big fan of the compact setups. Thank you very much. Five pounds, you're a beast. Yeah, um, hopefully I'll be doing more of that. I have a whole bunch of budget cameras. I'm hoping to get through them and to, sorry. Just checking a message here um hoping to get through all those cameras we still have to do that uh like eight cameras the the list is growing something like eight to ten cameras under three hundred dollars for video so that's coming up lots of fun stuff with that um but yeah i really enjoy that too i love like little cinema riggy things that's really really juicy stuff Thank you for the kind words, Peter. He digs the backpack. Who is looking at the brand? Who is look the brand? Uh, you mean the the backpack is T U B U Tubu Tub Tuba on uh, Amazon. Film Riot is great, Steve. Ha ha, PewDiePie. I love PewDiePie. I really dig his stuff, especially now. Um. Use caps for no reason in your titles. Gone sexual. Wait till the end. Pixel 5 is having a good time in the chat here. Which I need to figure out how to get on the screen so people watching this afterward can enjoy all y'all's beautiful types. Doorbell just rang. Dogs barking. Um, know of any nice hard cases on budgets? Amazon makes some now. They have their own branded stuff. Um, Amazon has a lot of stuff. If you just jump on there and start perusing hard case or camera hard case, Pelican is just so good. They are balls heavy though. So, um, for travel, they're kind of rough, but you can't beat them. You really can't. Um, when is the skin tone video coming out? Twitter picture. Remember? Oh yeah. 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 So that'll come up. Um, what I was getting to in that video is. Yeah, we'll talk about it in the future, but skin tones, good stuff coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cinematographic shorts. What is the MX comment about? That's about the Aperture MX light. It's a tiny, tiny little light that's going to kick butt. You're great. Thanks for the you. I bought the mighty key or er, Canon EOS M. Yeah, that video did really well. So I love that camera. I just wish it had a flip out screen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Moving along here. Biggest fan from Jamaica. Thank you. Brand of the light stand I showed. This is the Aperture LSRL7. So it packs down nice and small and then goes up to seven something feet. Is the G7 still your go to for 4K budget? Yeah, you just can't beat it. Especially if you buy used um, and get a good deal. $400, $500. Um, 
man, such a good camera using it right now. Um, for any of the videos, like the one I just did today, yesterday, I use this setup, Panasonic G7 shooting 4K, works great. Brand of the tripod is Obin, that little carbon fiber one that I showed you. In your streaming software OBS XSplit, whenever you're using the option to add the chat, oh, thank you, Dylan. I will figure that out. So it's in OBS. I thought it was in YouTube for some reason. Epos, Vox, Apples, and such. <laughs> Epos, you can confirm that, right? How do I turn on chat here on the side? That new YouTube feature. Better focal length for YouTube, 16 to 35 or 24 to 70. Um, I don't know. It depends on the look you're going for. Um, to pick on Peter McKinnon, if you want kind of that like, what's up up in your business a wide angle is great um i think that's primarily what he's uses or it looks like it's a wide angle um from some of his uh older stuff at least i feel like his new stuff too um this is a 14 millimeter but it's on a really cropped setup so it's kind of wide angly um i i kind of go back and forth i like the compression look of a longer lens so just depends. I usually find myself around 40 to 60 for YouTube, that millimeter range. Uh, yeah, DM me. Cool. I will do that, sir. Um, RGB light review this or next month. I'm hoping to get that done soon, that RGB light. Um, hint, the lights themselves are like 20 bucks or less. So really nice. Thoughts about Kinfinity. I was just watching part of Philip Bloom's review on that camera. Looks really solid. Um, I don't think I'll buy one. I was very tempted, though. But uh, I love that they're in the space, that they're kicking some butts, and people are starting to notice them. And uh, I think that's just going to get better and better. And, yeah, very excited about more companies getting involved that aren't Red, Canon, Alexa, or... RE or any of that stuff. Um, cool, cool, cool. Gotta go. Thanks, Caleb. Yellow Rose Farm. Have a good night. Um, should I, at this state, should I stay with Lumix or go with another company? I mean, Sony is killing it right now with their new body. Do you think that Panasonic will come up with something? budget good um i i think there is um i would love to see what panasonic does with the i don't know what generation it is third or fourth fifth generation of these cameras the sony g7 g85 um now that they're kind of bumping up the gh series yeah we'll see um sony is great as of where things are standing right now oh, it's such a hard decision it really is tough. And that's what's great about competition is they're both really doing well. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. The way I kind of think about it is depending on the market, a lot of these cameras aren't dropping in a ton in value. So you can kind of buy and sell. Yeah, you'll lose a little bit. But if you're doing consistent work, that's really nothing. Um, so you can flip cameras and move back and forth. If you're going to invest in a ton in lenses, that's obviously rough. I think getting Canon glass is really smart. Like if I was starting today, uh, what I would do is have all Canon mount stuff, probably, whether that be Rokinon, Cine light uh, lenses, or Canon lenses themselves, or all this cool stuff that we've been talking about that you can adapt to Canon. Invest in that or invest in Nikon or something that you can adapt. That will always be able to, you know, you can take that with you wherever you go. And then what you do is you get a couple native lenses. So let's say today I'm going all in Sony. Um, if I already have Canon lenses and adapt lenses that adapt to Canon, I'm good to go. There's tons of great adapters out there. And then I would buy, you know, one or two really good Sony lenses like uh, the 28 to 105, maybe a prime. And now you're good with autofocus and all that good stuff, but you still have your workhorse lenses. Uh, and then if you switch over to Panasonic, 
you're still good. You just have to sell those two Sony lenses and then buy a couple Panasonic lenses. That's probably how I would approach all this because it's just going to get worse, guys. If you're talking about competition, Fuji's getting more involved. Who knows what Canon and maybe, probably not, but maybe Nikon will do with the mirrorless thing. So keep it loose with your gear. Make sure it's compatible. Uh, and then maybe take that approach where you only have a couple lenses for the system that are native um, and then you have a good workhorse set of lenses like for me i have three really nice nikon zooms that are fully manual and they work with everything i've never sold those they've made me the most money over time just because they're great for documentary style filming so uh those will work with anything and then i can get a couple little you know lenses here and there for panasonic and sony Anyway, long answer, uh, but hopefully that helped. We got a couple donations to get through here. Ryan Bisco Barnes, $20 Canadian. Thank you very much. He says or asks, I use the FZ300 holding off on the FC2500 for the next version. I know it's a bridge camera, but does what I need it to. Love your show and learn so much from you. Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, yeah, I should have covered that camera the FZ 2500. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I'm glad that's working for you. And yeah, I'm very curious to see what Panasonic does with that. That should be very interesting. Uh, thank you for the donation. And then Miss Tech, $25. She says, you're such a genuine and helpful guy. I watch your videos and have purchased some of your helpful guides. I don't have a question. Just wish you continue success. That's very sweet of you. Thank you very much for that. Um, you guys are just a bunch of sweetie pies. My goodness. Very nice. Right. Well, guys, we are well over our hour. I think we're probably going to wrap this up. This was a fun one. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what you'd like to see next week. Um, did you dig this? The whole kind of Q&A, a little bit of, you know, talking head, talking about lenses or whatever topic, unboxing. Should I just unbox everything on Wednesdays? I don't know. You let me know. Um, you guys were great. This was a lot of fun. And I hope you all have a lovely evening. Um, NAB's coming up. If you're going to be there, uh, I'll wear a red shirt or something. <laughs> we'll find a way to connect. I love walking around meeting everybody. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. Have a great evening. And uh, you guys are great.